The gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Massey, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dolio, over here. <laughs> Mr. Dolio, my colleague, Mr. Crawford, asked you about flexibility in the air, airport improvement program, which are federal dollars that, that come back to the airports. And you lamented the fact that th there was a shortage in revenue, that flexibility would help in that program, but you still needed more funds. Can you talk about the other sources of revenue that airports have and how that plays into it, particularly my follow-up question is going to be about the passenger facility charge. Great. Okay. The airports have different funding sources to use for capital projects. Of course, PFC program, uh, the AIP grant program, uh, airport funds that, that remain or, and are usable after all expenses are, are taken care of are pretty much the, the bigger pots. And right now we have the temporary bill program that will run uh, for another three years. Now, you heard the stats earlier that there's, uh, there's $30 billion a year need in airport infrastructure uh, development. Uh, those funds combined over airports, uh, the AIP program, PFCs, airport revenues, uh, equate to about $13 billion a year. So there's, there's still a big gap. Uh, so something has to give or something has to be done to start closing that gap. Uh, the PFC program, when it was stood up in, in 2000 uh, at $3 and later, uh, in, I'm sorry, in, in, in 90 uh, at, uh, at $3 and 10 years later was about to 450, has lost value over time with inflation. Uh, so it doesn't buy you the same thing it did then. Uh, bumping the PFC uh, would be a very significant help, and it would be airports uh, self-generating the funds uh, from local users of, of airports and airport facilities. Uh, so it's a big gap. And again, the flexibility would help, uh, but, but really we need to bump the programs and provide more funding. Some, sometimes when Congress wants to raise taxes, we call it a, a user fee as a euphemism. But the passenger facility charge never goes into our coffers here at the federal government. Right. It truly is a user fee because it, it goes from the user to the airport. Can you t talk about uh, how you use those fees responsibly and what you would do if we did increase the cap uh, for the first time in many years, it, allowing you to collect your own revenue? It's with the big infrastructure needs, a lot of it in terminals and land side. Uh, what the PFC program does it, is gives you the flexibility to use those funds in those areas as opposed to everything on the airfield. The AIP program is more geared to airfield improvement. So as PFC revenues in, increase, uh, airports have a better ability to improve terminals, improve the airfield as well. We can use uh, those funds on the airfield. They can provide uh, matches to, uh, to uh, grants that we receive in picking up that gap. And the more we can do with, uh, with grants and with the PFC program, it's less we have to do with debt and less costs that flow down to the air carriers that uh, fly in and out of our facilities. Uh, so we're always, as airport operators, uh, we are consistently looking for ways to fund our needs. And, and no one's, I, and I can tell you, I've, I've been a CEO in three airports. Uh, the needs were different in each. And we adapt to the needs. Uh, New Orleans, the new terminal was essential. Uh, in St. Louis, uh, we went through a significant upgrade of the existing facilities, and that was sufficient there. Uh, in San Antonio, a new uh, terminal and concourse was needed to replace a World War II facility. Uh, so it's different needs everywhere. None of us are out uh, building monuments to our greatness. It's just <laughs> essential needs in those communities. And the PFC program has, has gone a long way uh, in helping us develop those facilities, but it is losing value with inflation. I'm, I'm sorry I don't have much time, Mr. Santa, but I had a question for you, and, and hopefully the chairman will indulge me and allow you to answer it if I go over time. 
Uh, we've seen recent reports, and I don't know if they're true or apocryphal, or if these are things that happened in the past and we just didn't pay attention, but we've seen recent reports of, I don't know how you characterize them, but I'll call them near misses, uh, when planes are taking off and landing and, and get closer than we're comfortable with at airports. I've seen those in social media. I don't know if it's more than normal. Can you let the public know, are those, are there an increased number of those incidents? And if so, what's the, what's, what do you think the cause is? Well, some of the recent events that, in, that have been in the news are, um, you know, they're, they're troubling for us. It's an increased amount of risk that we're unwilling to accept right now. Uh, but they really are inspired and invoked, unfortunately, by uh, lack of staffing. When you control more traffic with less operational positions, you introduce risk into the system. Now, the NTSB is, is uh, investigating those. We partner with them. We're part of the... Uh, uh, the investigation to ensure that we learn from those uh, events and we don't repeat those, but ultimately working more traffic, six day work weeks, 10 hour days introduced, introduces risks to the system. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Uh, Ranking member of the full